Hey guys, my name is Ross Stragenza. I'm a sound designer and composer uh, for the games industry. I've been around for many years and something I've ended up doing quite often, I'm not even really sure why it ended up happening so often, but is diegetic music for video games. I've written diegetic music for Crisis 2, Crisis 3, Deathloop, Cyberpunk 2077, Homefront Revolution, and quite a few other games that I can't remember right now. Um, it's an important part of modern video games, and as the worlds get bigger, the need for that kind of content gets bigger. So it's um, it's an important thing to know about and to understand. And there are pitfalls, and there are good ways to approach it, so I thought I would just give you a bit of a heads up of what I've learnt so far. Um, diegetic music. I probably should explain what that word means, because I've already said it like 35 times in 20 seconds. That's a ridiculous exaggeration. Um, it means in-world, basically. So if you think of, uh, let's talk about a scene from a film. Uh, you've got the, the soundtrack playing, you've got your awesome hands and music playing, and then um, the actress gets in a car, turns on the radio, and Credence starts playing. Uh, that was the soundtrack, Credence playing in the film. That's diegetic music. It's placed within the world of the, well, the fictional world that we're in. Uh, Likewise, if you're in a video game and you get in a lift in the future and you're Keanu Reeves and you've got a silver arm and there are little TV screens dotted around playing adverts with music, which is music that I wrote and very proud of, um, then that's diegetic music, in-world music. It's placed within the environment and as you move away from it, it'll fade away. And as you, you know, pass by it, you may get some Doppler and stuff on it, depending on where it is and stuff, but it's it's pointed within the environment it's emitting from the environment and um, it's designed to give the world's richness and dynamism because um, designing the sound of ambient spaces in games can be quite difficult um, if, if you've got like a bustling inner city then it's kind of all right you've got cars moving around people chatting but let's say we've got like a, a desolate sci-fi building that no one lives in anymore it can be that you're just trying to do sound design for like corridors full of nothingness <laughs> if you've got the chance of let's say a tv screen where um uh there's like um creepy melodies playing or something like that then that gives you a chance to um uh just infuse it with some dynamism and some motion and some active sound so in that way it can be very useful also uh it can do a lot of important uh work in terms of um ambient fiction like world building so uh, take Wolfenstein for example like uh, for that some of the songs I wrote were like uh, because it's like an alternate world where the Nazis won in World War II I was writing a lot of like resistance songs that were disguised uh, uh, as just pop songs for like the French resistance and things like that so while they're just playing in the world they can contain sort of messages and, and ideas that they expand on the world's fiction well that's ridiculous Oh, I think he's gone. <laughs> that was the most ridiculous vehicle I've ever heard. Sorry about that. I don't know if you actually heard that, but if you did, it was pretty funny. So yeah, um, diegetic music, it's used uh, for storytelling, it's used for adding excitement to the uh, ambient environment, and uh, it works really nicely. And if you've got a game like, say, Cyberpunk, uh, then you can massively layer it. You can have it emitting all over the place from spots all around and um, just let it all wash together which again is, is one of the concerns for writing diegetic music. I guess let's dig into the, the pros and cons. Quick and dirty, yeah so oh yeah I guess when I say pros and cons here I'm kind of comparing contrasting to um, the actual main soundtrack so you need to kind of get in and get out pretty quickly with diegetic music because chances are um, most people won't be standing near, near the spot where it's emitting in the game for a very long time. They'll be passing through an environment and hearing a bit of it. So your two choices there are really make it incredibly punchy and straight to the point with something cool or make it very textural and tonal and long and ambient so that uh, either way they're either getting a little burst of exactly the point you want to make or there is no main point to make and you're just 
giving it sort of a, a texture so that when they pass by is adding to the feel of the environment so it's something to think about repetition is a pro and a con so like I say, it needs to be punchy, and if you're like doing a little pop song for um, diegetic placement in the game, you probably don't want to do like a, a 40 second intro because it, um, they're just not going to happen to pass by at the right time. Because there is that element of open world sort of synchronicity with, with this as well, because this is mostly used in, uh, well, not necessarily fully open world games, but games with free roam of an environment. So if you've got like a really cool part in a song that you're going to be adding for this diegetic music, you don't know when they're going to be there listening to it. So, you know, make sure you have a few choruses in with your cool bit or just cut it down to the bare essentials and pare it down to the important part you care about because they might miss it. And then there's the uh, binding with the environment, uh, which again is a pro and a con. Um, so like I say with Cyberpunk, for that instance, there was a sometimes that you'd hear like 10 of my tracks playing in the same space and they were just over different distances and things uh, and they were sort of wash in and out um, so that causes complications that you need to be aware of which we'll talk about in a minute when we get to uh, mixing diegetic music um, and yeah I guess uh, repetition on the 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 bad side of it is um, you need to make sure that the content that you write isn't annoying basically <laughs> because uh and and this will tie into something later about talking to the the audio team you don't want to end up writing like a melody it's like doopy doopy doo doo biddle bit ba doo bibble bit ba dip bit boo and then that's all it is and it repeats again and again and again because if you're not aware where, that, where that's placed in the game that may appear you know uh once every five minutes i mean probably the audio team are going to be savvy enough not to allow something like that to happen but um i mean also be aware of like, like what you think's a bit annoying <laughs> as a piece of music like if you think yeah i guess this this makes sense for the game but you're not sure and like if you're a freelancer then you don't want to end up in a situation where something you were a bit iffy about is now being used all over the place and, and it, you don't love it so um Actually, I'm going to skip to that bit right now. So an important point I was going to make down the line here is good communication with the audio team. Um, probably that'll be the audio director that you'll deal with the most. Uh, maybe it'll be one of the leads or the seniors if they've kind of, um, you know, delegated the task of um, uh, music management stuff to, to someone else on the team. Um, but um, ask them as, as much as possible where the music is going to be used, uh, like the context, how often, if other stuff is going to be playing, if it's going to be a situation where there's a lot of combat and things like that. Uh, is it going to be competing with like a dynamic music system? Uh, if you know those, the answers to those kind of questions, you can sculpt your music. So, for example, if it's going to be used um, while you're just sort of roaming a city at night and not lots going on, then you can you can use that. You could get like a cool kind of Blade Runner feel to it. You could slow it down, have deep slow modulation, and make it a bit more, uh, you know, um, evolving and evocative. But if it's going to be in like a crammed uh, shopping mall shoot shooting scene, then you probably just want it punchy and straight to the point, uh, and also not so repetitive that it's annoying in any way. So um, get as much intel as possible. If you can, get them to send you videos once it's been put in place because it takes a long time to make video games. Chances are that they'll be able to show you what it sounds like in situ in the game. And if something is niggling at you, then, then talk to them and you, you could probably get them a new version that you think sits better. So that's super, super, super important. All right, let's talk briefly about mix. First of all, I, I touched very briefly on there is keep it dynamic, keep it moving, keep it modulating, um, especially in situations where it might be, you know, multiple instances played at once. You need to keep that music moving. Use filters, use sort of rhythmic tools, um, you know, delays that, that, that uh, the wetness comes in and out and things like that. Keep it moving, keep it shifting and evolving and swelling. And that will mean that then if you've got um, different instances, even if it's not the same song that you do, but you've got a few different songs playing in the world, if they're moving and shifting, then they'll sort of swell and they'll play together nicely. If they're static chunks of, you know, very squashed music, it's just going to get annoying. So something to think about. 
And then there's, there's danger zones as well. Um, video games tend to have a lot of sounds that, that meet at the like 300 to 800 hertz area, like that little sort of muddy high bass area. Um, so you can make life easier for your music and for the sound designers and um, soundtrack composers by making your music as transparent as possible. Like just retain dynamism, don't squash it. It's, it's really silly to squash diegetic music because it's just going to be sitting there like a big fucking turd in the middle of the mix. So you want to just um, keep dynamic range, don't, don't over compress, don't over limit and um yeah that, that's gonna help yourself and just if you can maybe just duck out some frequencies in those with subtractive eqing in those 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 danger areas because they'll just be fighting with everything else and um yeah it'll just make the game sound muddy which is a problem in terms of like a creative things to consider let's say you've got 10 tracks to write you've been commissioned to write consider that work as a whole um and try and get as much variety and um difference in dynamics within those those tracks as possible so like with the um the cyberpunk brief i had I, I had to try and write each one like it was from a different composer which was great fun and very challenging but i did try and if if I, one i did was quite bass heavy or one had a lot of very punchy percussion then i would push over into sort of um, ambient territories the next one and very airy and then like um like prickly details in another so that all of these work together as like sort of um, different ingredients that can be added into the mix and each have their own flavor, but also not be competing with each other in, in you know, too much of a direct way. A final thing to think about uh, is just because let's say you're just doing background music for a tiny advert that plays one time in a game. If the audio director really is passionate about the game, and they will be, um, you may end up rewriting that piece of music 30 times, even though it's 30 seconds long. It's the nature of diegetic music. Each of the pieces tends to be quite short, but just because it's short and it's in the background and it's diegetic in world music, not like main score or you know big cinematic moments, be, be diligent and be proud of your work. And just, if you need to do it 30 times to get it right, do that and don't get snippy or weird with with the audio director if they keep coming back and wanting minor changes like all work in the video games industry leads to, to to more work and if you're pleasant to work with communicative and reliable then you'll get more work and eventually it'll be bigger work that's just the nature of it so diegetic music can be hard work and it can be a lot of iteration a lot of uh, you know minor changes and stuff like that but stick with it um, and that's it, I think. It's, it's a really interesting part of game music. It's, it's growing all the time as game worlds grow all the time. So uh, more and more it'll be required and it provides its own set of challenges and rewards. So enjoy it. And if you have any other questions about the nature of diegetic music, please feel free to post in the comments and I will uh, answer anything that I see there. And please do like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials over the coming months. I've got another one that I'm going to be doing this evening, in fact, hopefully. So um, I'll add that if I get it done. Um, and yeah, enjoy the music you write. Enjoy playing games and peace and love. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.